Yeah. All right, before we start, I'm going to throw a number out. 294. Anyone know what that number is? That's your days till Christmas. So <laughs> if you're thinking of doing your Christmas presents, it's time to actually start thinking about it. All of the boxes you see right here, these are all cut from the exact same piece of molding. Some of them I flipped it over. Some of them just changed the angle. Like this one is a much more laid down angle, which gives you a very vertical box. Whereas if you stand the uh, piece up as far as the blade will let you, you end up with these very vertical, so these uh, splayed outsides. But just by reversing the one molding, you can get a plethora of different shaped boxes. In fact, this box isn't even the same molding top and bottom. It's two separate. This molding and this molding are two different cuts. Even the plain moldings, but nothing to them. This is just this molding makes for, and I happen to like the shape of this type of molding. This is all of these are pine. That pine molding is two dollars and ninety eight cents for an eight footer over at Builder Surplus. It ends up being two dollars per box. So the, the, you want to make these as Christmas presents. This represents two dollars a piece. You can make an awful lot of these instead of giving someone just a gift card. Give them a gift card in a box. Mm -hmm. This maple with a uh, cherry handle. Uh, yeah, maple. This is maple bottom, uh, maple top, cherry bottom, with a uh, three-piece lid. This is some unknown generic softwood. It's not poplar. It's some Indonesian softwood. It's a paint grade. Uh, it's not uh, really meant to be stained. This is about as big a molding as these jigs will handle. You have to make the jig a little bit bigger. This will handle up to a four and five eighths crown molding. This large one in the back here was made from this. I made this years ago on a uh, slide miter, same principle. And this one is cut from a simple piece of, uh, oh, not one of these costs more than $10. There's two simple jigs. This jig makes the base. At no point do you have to know what the angle is on any of these. Your maximum angle is set by how tall your blade can go, which on this is right where this cutoff is. So when I lay this molding in here, I can go up to that cut. This is as much angle as I can go because that's as high as the blade will go. Those boxes are cut about at this angle. That square upright box is cut somewhere around here. All you do is you find out, you hold it at about where you want it, anywhere below this line, cut yourself a spacer block. There's your angle. It doesn't matter what the angle is. You're going to cut them all the same off this same spacer. So you're never finding the angle. You set your saw. I set this at 45.3 degrees. I use an angle block. Uh, I much prefer the angle box than trying to read the angle off the saw or even use a square. Uh, once you have a block, you mark this one, you can make that same block, that same box over and over again, depending on how much production you want to do. The dimensions on these, uh, I've got the full plans. So I've made a bunch of copies. I'll pass them out to anyone who wants the plans for these and the full directions. Also on my YouTube channel, I'll have a full video up step-by-step -step of doing this for anyone that wants to make these. But you start, this is the exact opposite of cutting crown molding on a slide miter. When you cut your crown molding for a house on a slide miter, you put the top down. So the base of your uh, slide, slide miter is the ceiling. On this, 
whatever part you have up will be the top. So if you want this particular molding up, you put it in this way. If you want this piece of the molding up, it goes in this way. It works the same way for the top one. Whichever piece you have up is going to be the top. Oh. And you said you put it at 25.3. I like to go a little over 45 on all my joints. That way I know that the outside joint's going to hit first. If I'm going to, if it's going to fit in properly, the gap's going to be in the inside. So I, Whenever I set a 45, I always go a tiny bit over 45. Uh, it's trying to get it exactly 45. You, it's such a tiny difference going over 45. You, the joints are, are going to fit all the way anyway. You're, ne you're never going to see anything. But if you ended up just under 45, then there's a chance that you're going to get that little opening. So just out of force of habit, I always set... Uh, you can go 46. I don't think it'd make a difference. I'm, I'm used to setting 45.3. That's what I do. All right. Which box are we going to make? Make this one? Okay. So the top will go up. As long as we stick past that little 45, we know we're going to be good. So we cut this first 45 on all of them. Now, as long as you make them all the same, it doesn't matter what length you make them. All of these, how I set mine, I'd, I'll show you in a moment how I set the uh, width. I decide on my width first, and the width I determine by how wide this piece is going to be. And once I have the width, I multiply the width times 1.61 to get the length. And then I have a perfect golden rectangle every time. It makes for, it's a, it's a pleasing rectangle. You know you're getting a shape that people like by going to the 1.61 to one ratio is the golden rectangle. Which in this case will be nine and five eighths by six and one eighth. <laughs> But I'll show you how I do it anyway. Now for the other angle, we just take our block from the front. We move our block to the back of this of this setting. That's all you have to do. It's still still top at at all, at all times. For both sides, the same thing, both sides there, the top will always be up. Put the stop block in.
this way we don't have to measure but we don't want to measure and again whatever the angle is don't know don't care Now, if I didn't already know the dimension I wanted and I wanted to figure out my width, I would just take two of these, take whichever piece uh, on this one, we're going to go this side up again. Yes, we are. Looking straight down, that's two and a half inches. Now, if I wanted a half inch center or one inch center, let's say I want three quarters of an inch, I would go five and three quarters of an inch on this setup. Uh, on this one, I went a little bit wider. So I went with six and one eighth so that I could have the uh, nine and five eighths by six and one eighth, which is the dimension I was looking for. But you can control your width by just holding these at the right angle Put your piece in place. Again, we're about two and a half inches. So you know that if these were to touch in the middle, we'd have a five inch side. And five is five inches about as small as you want to go. Because once you get smaller than five inches, you end up. This one is five inches. You end up with a very small piece when you're cutting the top. There's very little sitting on the fence. So five inches leaves you enough to sit on the fence, but any smaller than this, it would come almost to a point and you'd have to put a sacrificial fence behind this fence to support it. Now we just line our mark up with the edge of the jig. We set our stop block. Because again, if we don't have to measure, we don't want to measure. Let's see if I can hold these in my hand. I cannot. <laughs> hold two of them for now. That's <laughs> ah, fine. Sure. Yeah. Now, joints are easy, automatic angle. This is what the box is going to look like up. You're going to have this much of an angle on your sides. Now, we need to cut a slot. 
This slot is where the one eighth of an inch, I use one eighth inch Baltic birch. These are small enough that you can just rip yourself a piece of one eighth of an inch anything on the table saw, but I find it convenient to use the one eighth inch Baltic birch. The angle that that's going to go into is that actually this angle. So you're taking an angle reading, again, doesn't matter what the angle is, but you're taking your reading directly from the piece you just cut. It's dark in it, I can't see. should be good now I don't trust your soul Pull that piece out. Oh, I can pull it to the other side. Yay. <laughs> At this point, before cutting that slot, generally what I'll do is I'll cut my legs first because I don't have my bandsaw or scroll saw here. I cut a sample. I just take whatever sander I'm using in the uh, oscillating sander, or I can use the drill press, same thing. I just draw a circle. I draw a line up for how I, I wanna go, which is a little more than half of the diameter on this. I draw myself a line, draw two circles with this blank, cut it on the bandsaw. We're gonna refine it on the uh, oscillating sander. All I do is I go on the back of it, I make myself a mark about an eighth of an inch above where that leg is. And that's going to be, I wish that splitter wasn't on there. Okay. Type of height. All right. You want to go in about half the thickness of wherever the wood is at that point. All right. We set the saw at the angle that's on the back.
for the PR base. I say the angle is just whatever angle we happen to cut it at. You need to whack the top of the table top. <laughs> now. I'll give you a hint that's going to make your life a lot easier. The one eighth inch fits in these. It fits in there snugly right now. This is going to bite you in the butt when you go to glue this together. <laughs> Move your fence over 30 seconds of an inch. You want a slightly sloppy fit here because God forbid you didn't get the angles just right somewhere. If you're locked in here, there's no free play. So I would just take the fence. Give it a slight tap. And he's got much bigger room. Now we have the dimensions for our bottom. Actual dimension is three and three quarter. We'll make it three and five eighths. Seventeen and a quarter. We'll go seventeen and three sixteenths. Uh, seven and three sixteenths. Are you measuring? To the bottom of the slot there. Yes, the, the, the bottom of the slot is going to be its uh, widest point. This is here. Just line up. What did I say I wanted? Very right.
Okay. This is it your base? Gluing these up. You can band clamp them, whatever you want on there. I find the best thing. Get yourself your scrap of plywood. Your glue on, move your blocks in, and then these little one dollar things from Harbor Freight. These are the handiest little clamps. They, they cost like they cost a buck and change, but when you're clamping little things, these are just the perfect little clamps for stuff like this. And uh, you you can get you know two long clamps for here, but I just put my four side pieces in, screw them in. These, this, I don't know, it's a square. I just butt these two against, uh, obviously I would unscrew them, screw them back in, and then run myself a clamp here and these two little corner clamps, let it dry. And like I say, ordinarily we would have these feet in place. I'll show you the standing in a minute. We're gonna move on to the top first. The tops I cannot touch. My jig does not fit on this table saw. The slot difference, the slots are different on this saw than they are on mine. So I'm gonna walk you through. I pre-cut some, figuring that might be the case. It's just as simple to cut the top as it is to cut the bottom. There's only a little bit more math. Unfortunately, my jig isn't going to go in here by any way. But let's say I was lined up on here. You have your base put together. You need three measurements from this piece. This is as complicated as the math gets. A plus A minus B plus C. That's the most complicated math you're going to have to do. A is the total depth. Place the molding the way you want it on the box. Measure from the depth of the box to the very top. In this case, three and a quarter. B. Do that. B is the depth of the box to the top of the box. One and nine sixteenths. The only other measurement you need, you have to add back in, is this little measurement from the bottom of this angle to the top. You need to know what this is. You're adding this back in. This little bit of gap you have, see here, this has to be added back on. And the easiest way to measure that, once you have a straight edge on, just take your small square, your combination square, set it to where it's hitting, and then just read one eighth. So three and a quarter minus one and nine sixteenths plus one eighth gives us one and 13 sixteenths. That's the measurement you're going to use to set your height. If you look on this jig, you'll see a bunch of little lines. Those are the heights of each box. Once you have that height reading, the height minus the height of the box plus this angle depth is this height. You would take this, make yourself a mark, Hold your molding against that mark. Measure the space you need, two and one eight. Oh, look, we have a two and one eight space. <laughs> that you're done measuring now. All your angles are set, all your measurements are done. You need those three measurements. 
You're going to go A plus B minus C. It's all in the directions I'm going to give you, and it'll be all on the website. That's going to be your measurement. I've got a full set of those. <laughs> I cut a full top for that box, knowing that I probably wasn't going to be able to use my jig. Let's clear some of the stuff off of here. Again, just like before. Top goes up, we set in, the blade is even with the edge. The blade is going to be even right with the edge of the saw curve you made when you built this as just two, two pieces of two by four, two pieces of scrap. You got a little filler block here you put in just to have the blade have a place to run out for safety. You go up against it, you're going to cut this angle on all four pieces. Then you're gonna take your spacer, move it to the other side. Same thing, once you have your depth, you're going to cut them on this side. And again, this is what I meant about not being much smaller than this. When this piece is being cut, this is how much is on here. With, this is fine. This is enough. Anything more than that, I would put a sacrificial fence back here to support the piece. So in general, try to keep no less than a five inch side, unless you want it to meet, in which case you'll have to have a sacrificial fence that you'll have to keep cutting into. Once we have these, this angle is not going to be, we don't take that angle the same way we took the bottom. So we have, let's say we have those four pieces cut. Again, the jig holds everything for you. Once you have that spacer cut, you just cut four angles on one side with the spacer, move the spacer over, cut your other four cuts, you end up with these four pieces. And you're just matching the length as well. Yeah, I'll, all I do is I trace directly from the box. Once I have one angle cut, I just hold it to the edge of the box and make make myself a uh, cut, hold it there, put my uh, stop block in place. So let's say no measuring, everything is direct transfer. This angle, the angle for this slot, this time just take yourself a piece of straight edge, piece of junk wood, put it on the top. Take your molding, the side up you want up. Let me do it on this side. This is the angle you want. So you're just going to trace that angle. Set your angle just like we did before, except when we cut the bottom, we tilted the blade towards the, towards the uh, fence. This time we're going for the top, we're gonna to tilt away from the fence. I'll show you the setup on that because you have to use a sacrificial fence. If you don't have a sacrificial fence, you can just clamp something on, but these, get these on eBay or Amazon for like five bucks. I mean, these are not an expensive piece. Let's 
expense is a lot thinner than mine. You should always have one of these. If you have a table saw, you should have a sacrificial fence anyway, because dado cuts for rabbits, et cetera, you're always going to want to have one. And this is just as far as I'm concerned, these little clamps are just the easiest way of doing this. All right. So let's say we have our angle. I don't trust the table saws that I don't know. All right, let's say that was our angle. I'm just being close on this. Cut here. When we cut the bottom, we cut the bottom with this flat on. For the top, we cut it flat against the fence. Again, we're cutting this angle and we determine the angle of the blade from a from a piece directly from the top of the block, the box. Okay. At this point, we have our setup. We're just going to run these straight across. When you cut the smaller ones, you see here somewhere that I've done that with. Here we go. There's very little base on these. Don't try to pass them up by themselves. Actually, this is going to be the exact opposite of the piece I want. I saw it tilt the other way. I don't know if I can get a uh, easier for that. I forgot that this all sets up opposite way. Mine does. Yep. He's the new gold. Well, ordinarily I would have both cutoffs from having made the top. On my saw, I would just hold this piece against the fence and use this as my push block. Because you know you're being when the light, when the molding profile lines up, you know you're holding it properly and use that to push with. Uh, I can't demo it here because I didn't cut the top, so I don't have the mating angle for it. I have the mating angle if we had a right tilt table saw. But you get the idea. Don't don't try to push it through like this. Not a good idea. You want this piece behind it with a mating angle. Pass it halfway through and then just back it right back out. That gives you a top. You take the measurement the exact same way. Again, once you're set up to make these, if you want to make the exact same box instead of changing angles, once you have those spacers, if you want to make these for Christmas presents, if you want to make the same box, again, uh, Builder Surplus is the best place to buy cheap moldings. Like I say, uh, even, 
builder surplus there. There's one uh, by the airport on Jefferson Boulevard. There's one in West Warwick uh, in uh, Phoenix. Uh, there's two other ones. Uh, actually, the one in Jefferson Boulevard right now uh, has a wonderful load of uh, mahogany up to 16 inches wide at 595 a board foot, which is a really good price. And they've also got cherry 12 foot long seconds. It's it's all full of Wayne. It's all full of bad pieces, but it's nineteen dollars for a twelve footer, one by tens. A lot of junk in. I've been pulling out all the good stuff. Sorry, people. <laughs> uh, they get they get a huge huge supply of it. It's all junk. You're only going to get four or five foot pieces out of these twelves. But at nineteen dollars a piece, if you get a four and a five out of that piece, at nineteen dollars a piece, and it's seven eighths. It, so it's, uh, but they've always, always have a, a, a good stock of uh, pine, a good stock of oak, uh, the mahogany and such, they get in, it's hit or miss what you're going to find there. It's like uh, the old Grossman's out. Uh, they sell cabinets and uh, windows and doors, but they have a lot of moldings. And like I say, these pine moldings, eight footers, $2.98 a piece. They always have these. Which brings the cost of these boxes, like say, two dollars a piece. This is the most expensive molding I bought from them, uh, ten dollars and ninety cents. I think you would get a box and a quarter out of it. Uh, I like the profile. Uh, these were six ninety five a piece. These oak pieces, uh, the cherry. I believe the cherry was eight ninety five for an eight foot length. The, those they don't always have on hand. Uh, I went down and I bought a little bit of everything so I could during the last week make a, make a demo and show different pieces. Uh, and again, this is about as big a molding as these jigs will allow. If you, if you think you're going to be making wider moldings, just increase the width of these jigs. And again, uh, handles. I just take an alternating piece of, uh, no, a different piece of wood, put an arc on it, throw it in. If the, the joint is wide, put three of them, build, build them up. If you don't want to, like in this one, I haven't been glued these together yet. Put a little piece of wood. Put a screw from the inside. Uh -huh. <laughs> put an knob on it. Put any set of handles inside that flat area. Run yourself up two dollars and a dowel across for a, for a wood assembly. But any standard hardware, if you make these wide enough, they'll accept any standard hardware. Well, down to hmm? uh, with these boxes, yes, the tops and the bottoms all made from the same molding. No, this one's not. You. I made them from the same molding just because it was quick and cheap for me to do so. This is made from the bottom is made from this piece of cherry, uh, and this is a totally different molding. So the moldings do not have to match by by any means. I just happened; it was just convenient to me to buy an eight footer and make a box. But if you've got a bunch of different scraps, there's no reason you can't use one molding for the top and a different molding for the bottom. It still looks fine. And again, this has one coat of, none of these are fully sanded or finished yet. The three of my had finishes on, I just have a quick one coat of uh, white barn varnish just to put some color on it. Uh, it still needs a little bit more sanding to be honest. But uh, you can mix and match whatever moldings you want. As long as the molding, like I say, will fit inside the opening you have. And again, when you make the, uh, your first outside angle cut, hold them together, Hold that top, that little measurement when you sight down, that tells you how much of a gap you're going to have. Because like I say, we had two and a half inches. So if we made the box five, we know that these would touch. If we made it five and five eighths, we know we're going to have a five eighths gap. So that's how you play. And like I say, once I set my width that way for the length, I just do the 1.61 to get a pleasing rectangle. And the tops just. Rest 
that, 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 that's it, just, just gravity, because there's an angle. They don't want to come apart because they're, they're angled in. I, I, and that changes depending on how upright you make them. This one is installed at almost a 90 degree angle as it would be on the ceiling, which means there's almost no angle on this one. So if you, I, I prefer, I don't like them this way. I like them to interlock. So I like to see that little bit of an angle in there that when you sit the lid on, the lid locks itself. These also lend themselves before you assemble. These really lend themselves easy for a uh, table saw and dado hinge. Because once you have this piece, there's nothing for you to just put it on there, run yourself the thickness of a hinge on both pieces, put it together. Now you've got a mortise in hinge, real easy to put on. Use magnets too, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, but let's like say the angle, I find that the angled mating fit is all they really need. And like I say, you reverse a lot of them. There's one that's reversed. This one's reversed. <laughs> you see on the bottom, this part of the molding is down. And on the top, Oh, I did not reverse this. Hang on. This one is the same. Here we go. On this one, it's reversed. That's why this one's so domed. This, and then reversed it up on top on this one. But again, because this angle, I sat this angle in the initial setup almost the same way it would be on a ceiling. I went to the maximum height, which gave me almost a flat top. Again, this is about your limit on size. Uh, you can make them, you can make this wider and bigger, but now you start increasing this. That's not even glued in on this. And if you don't want to do the jigs, it's possible to, this large one was cut from this molding years ago. Uh, on a uh, slide miter, I was uh, doing a job for a customer, and they had they custom had they had that molding custom made for their house, and they wanted us to do something with it. So I made a bunch of these boxes for them. Uh, this one I had thrown in my basement, and it's been sat in a damp basement for twenty years now. So when I took it out, there was two of the joints that come undone because I this never even got sanded or anything. This was an extra one, so I I never actually ended up getting this one finished. I go to put a finish on the rest of these, I'll probably stand and finish this one because this was distressed. Big house. The guy, anyway, we paid a guy, we called him Stabby Steve. We, to give you an idea of how much oak we went in through, the house is probably in the 4,500 square foot house. Not, not huge, but you know, large home. And he had some requirements for the wood floor. He wanted the wood floor to be four through eight inch widths and no one width was to run the length of the floor. So if you start with an eight, you went to two fours or a five and a three. If you had a five, you went to, uh, uh, anyway, no single length went to the house. And he had radiant heat. The contract called for us that we hit the radiant heat, we had to buy the floor. <laughs> we, we took the job. <laughs> We, we made patterns and we, we we spent months. Went through three floors. Before we showed up, he, his first lower floors, two floors didn't exactly equal an eight. He returned to the manufacturer, got another manufacturer. They manufactured, a, another manufacturer came in. We started installing that floor and then realized the tongue and grooves weren't perfect. The floor was gonna move up. We pulled up everything, put down, he sent that back to him. We got a third floor in. Now, all the flooring in this house, all the oak cabinets, oak beams, even the garage got that oak molding, everything. <laughs> oak staircases, he wanted it all distressed. So we hired someone from Stabby Steve. His job was to go around with all the 
screwdriver and stab everything and try not to be a pattern. So if you stab, 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 scratch, stab, stab, stab. Thousands and thousands of feet of this mud of molding everywhere. I'm like, made me cry. Beautiful oak cabinets, custom, custom oak cabinets were put in. Stab, 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 scratch, stab, stab, stab. The floor. We took a aluminum uh, roller for putting down uh, linoleum, and we put bands on it with broken nails and screws. Then we rolled that on the floor. We played bowling with, uh, we called it zero grit sandpaper, cobblestones. <laughs> broke, broke my little heart. It's beautiful work. And we were like rubbing cobblestones on the edges of the stairs. <laughs> like, it's like, really, you want to do this? And the man was, meticulous for detail and he wanted all that done we're like but he was an engineer he wanted wood to work in thousands of an inch and his stuff moves like we showed up he had paneling the, the downstairs basement was 54 feet by 38 foot was the basement and he put wainscoting in and he glued it all together and we told him you, you can't do that and he said no oh, i'm an engineer we, we tore it all out and put it back in allowed it to move the basement, concrete floor that they had secured, pressure treated uh, plywood to, and then routed it for radiant heat. And you want to put hardwood on that. And we told him the first time you turn on this radiant heat, this floor is going to move. And he's like, oh, I'm an engineer. You're paying me to put the floor down? I'm going to put the floor down. I told you this will not work. He's like, no, no, no. We got plastic underneath the with. That concrete is a sponge that, <laughs> sure enough, he had to use, he had, he had HVAC down there. The first time he tried to put on the uh, radiant heat downstairs, turn the radiant heat off, walk comes back down. <laughs> well, again, he was a mechanical engineer and he loved tight tolerances, but he knew nothing about wood. Hmm. Anyway, any questions on the boxes? <laughs> yes. You won't know what you won't want to know what angle to cut it at. You take the you take the reading for those dados from whatever angle you cut the box at. Now, if you've cut already cut a, a box one one box and you're gonna use the same spacers, yeah. now you have that reading, and yes, you can. If you haven't cut a box yet, then no, you can't because you need that angle. Once, you, once you've cut one box, if I wanted to keep making this box, once I have that angle, I could pre-cut that on all of them. Oh, I'm the one here. I'll set this up real quick. <coughs> Last little thing. Antique question. We're gonna put that piece with the uh, logo on it. Again, once you cut your circles on this. You're ready to make your legs on all of them. Instead of trying to get all your cuts perfect, again, just cut it on the bandsaw, cut it on the scroll saw, however you want to cut them. Just get them close. It's unimportant. Once you have the table set up, gave me my two perfect circles. Now I've made my bottom leveled out. So just, you know, you don't have to go nuts on the, on the 
bandsaw or the scroll saw trying to get that perfect cut just close once you set this i usually set it a little more than a tenth away to give myself a sixteenth of an inch cut in squares yourself off rounds your corners beautifully you're ready to make your legs quick and easy you don't have to do it on if you have an oscillating sander beautiful if you have a if you have a, a, a drill press just set yourself a block of wood over the drill put yourself a uh disc into it uh, a roll into it and cut away Question. Can you do all this with sliding? Microscope? You can. Uh, you won't be with the jigs. You'll, you will have to actually. It, it's not even good. You, you, you'll set a angle. You'll decide on which angle you're going to use. You'll do it by trial and error. Uh, you know that if you set it at, at 45 both ways, you'll have a 90 degree box. So you'll probably set it at something like 30 degrees and 45. You're always going to be 45. And then you'll lean it over at like 30 degrees, try that box. And if you like the splay of the box, that's what you're going to cut it at. You'll have to make your own stops and holders for it. You'll have to make a, uh, I would suggest putting a piece of plywood screwed down to the top of your, uh, the platen of your uh, slide miter. So you can put stop blocks. Same thing, you'll need an extended fence on the back. That's going to have a cutout on it, make room for the arm to swing through. That's how I did that one. That that one was done on the slide miter. The joints, if you look closely, the joints are okay on it, <laughs> but it works. Yes. And again, these are the only three tools. Actually, you only need a straight in, but a small square, sliding T bevel, and you'll need a combination square to find the uh, depth of beads. I've got the um, this is based out of a magazine article from years and years ago, which I never throw magazines away. <laughs> so I make copies, and here's all the uh, plans for everything how to make the jigs, what dimensions they are. So anyone who wants the copy over here, I'll leave them. Is that from the wood magazine? Uh, I don't remember if this one was wood. Let me see if it says. I, I, I remember one from like 20 years ago. And yeah, this is wood, this wood, wood magazine in yep. 1998. <laughs> yeah. Again, the cool plans are on there. And at the end of next week, I'll have a video up on my YouTube channel going through this step-by-step step for the bottom and the top. But let's say once you have the jigs, it's very straightforward. You, you can mass produce these really quickly. And again, 294 days left. If you're trying to build, chill. I want to do a quick mention for anyone on Zoom. I'm going to take the camera right now and walk over and do some close up with the camera on the boxes. I told her I already, already mentioned that I was going to send her. Let's see if I can get this thing off of here. And everyone knows what an illegal cube is for the greatest way to set. You know, set 45.3. All right, how do I get this? There's a set screw in there for the 20 with big ends. That, that set screw kind of comes and sets itself up a little bit. I'll tell you that's how I shut this thing off. I thought I need to bring it next year. Or are you on an uneven floor? I mean, I thought I was going to do it. 
I've, I've, seen, I've seen people to cube with Ryan. Ryan. Until the two degrees. They bring it from 45. Ryan, go. Ryan. Go. Ryan. Oh, I think I shut so the camera get, off by accident. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I, I have seen that. You might want to check that, but I think it's more still on, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. What am I hitting? Yeah, okay. I'll check that. Okay. Make sure I don't bump into something here. <laughs> I didn't hear it. The one the space you wanted my boot in, so like, you, don't, you can't hear it. It's, it's fine. It's two dollars five bucks. It's nothing you can hear. I said, you're not fully standing. I just put together as many as I could. There are cheats. I'm wondering. Yeah, you see that one because it's uh, all, all the rest of them. Yeah, you know, I like to make myself up a couple of fine ones and everyone gets gift cards this year, just getting it in the little wooden box. <laughs> That guy really like this one. The, the, again, uh, they have this one. This one is ten dollars and ninety-five cents for an eight quarter. Uh, it makes a little bit more than one box out of that uh, eight quarter. And I was, I was proud. when I bought it. I was like, okay, that's an awful flame molding. I don't think I'm gonna like the shape, but I ended up liking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's like cool. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of uh, Asian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a bit of Oriental uh, flavor. Yeah, I remember when this article was in Wood Magazine. I've still got it because I have been wanting to do these for years, ever since that came out. It's like, oh, that's pretty easy to do. It is. Like I say, every box here except for the library I made in the last two weeks. Oh. And I've just, I just never gotten around to doing. It. I'm trying them out. I'm not lying. Last week I was a fan for my router table. I bring it with me every week and press it and never showed up again. Okay. Finish it up. Thank you.